Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller, The Battle of the Century. Six o'clock in the morning, on top of a haystack in somebody's pasture somewhere in Yolo County, California. It was at a quarter to midnight last night when Jack, Doc, and Reggie crawled wearily, not to say disgustedly, and at the same time gratefully, onto this haystack, burrowed in for warmth and comfort, and went to sleep. The reason they were forced to take to a haystack is typical. Doc was driving the car along the main highway through Yolo County. He suddenly decided that one of the dirt roads to the left was a shortcut. This was at nine o'clock, and Jack and Reggie were dozing in the back seat. And so they drove for two hours in the dark of the moon on dirt roads that were not meant for car travel even in broad daylight and at night would have been hazardous for Beelzebub himself. Jack woke up and cursed Doc inelegantly and Reggie hung onto the bucking machine and chuckled. And Doc plowed doggedly ahead until he finally failed to negotiate a sharp turn and ended up in the ditch with a car on its side. Half an hour later, Reggie found the haystack and now at six o'clock, dawn has broken. And Reggie moves in the hay and stretches. Awake, Reggie? No, I say, Jack. Quite. I thought I was the first to open my eyes. No, I've been lying here watching the dawn come. Doc? We must have a clear conscience. Sleeping peacefully. Trouble with him, he hasn't any conscience at all. <laughs> Getting us into this kind of a mess. Oh, well, we weren't going any place in particular. Oh, you like sleeping in a haystack? Well, I can't say I've really minded. Hmm. It wasn't so bad at that, was it? Oh, jolly comfortable, on the other hand. <laughs> all right, but don't let Doc know you like it. <laughs> Quite. He's definitely in the doghouse. Running the car into a ditch and turning it over miles from civilization. You make it sound much worse than it really is, don't you think? You think so? Quite, yeah. First place, Doc was traveling slow when we went into the ditch and we toppled over easy. I mean to say, I don't think anything was broken. Even so, a car on its side in the ditch is pretty poor transportation. Oh, but look here, a team of horses from a nearby farm. Just a moment. Yeah? You say horses from a nearby farm? Yeah. Have you by any chance cast your eyes over the countryside since you opened them? No, not exactly. Lying here on my back, it looks to be a beautiful world. Flat on your back, all you can see is sky. Beautiful sky. Lovely morning. Uh-huh. Well, sit up and take a gander at the surrounding environs and say whether it looks so lovely. I don't. I will. Oh. I say. <laughs> well... Is the morning still as lovely? Oh, but look here. Miles and miles in every direction and not a valley thing in sight. Yeah. It appears we've got quite a jaunt between us and today's breakfast. But I said the road. Someone's bound to come by sooner or later. That, Reggie, is optimism with very little justification. Hmm? Why so? Well, there, there's every evidence that our red-headed Texas friend not only got us lost, but ran us eight or ten miles up a private road to turn us over. I say, private road? Well, it certainly isn't a county road. Matter of fact, if you look close, there's spots that look more like a rabbit's run. But even so, eight or ten miles of private road? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Out here, some of these big grain ranches spread for miles and miles without even a fence. Mm. Beautiful. What? Yeah. Yeah. Roll that sleeping Texan over here closer so I can kick him. <laughs> I say he's going to suffer enough when he wakes up. He sure is, if I can contrive it. No, I mean when he's discovered there's no food in the immediate vicinity. Oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Wake him up. Right now. Doc. I say, Doc. Wake up. Mm-hmm. Come on, Doc. Sun's up. Huh? That's what I said. Sun's up. Well, that's his tough look. Doc. Doc. Uh, Wake up. Uh-huh. Pretty soon. Not pretty soon. No. Okay, okay. Stop, stop shaking, man. I'm awake, ain't I? I don't know. Are you? Of course I am. <laughs> Say something then. <laughs> Jack, I think this is a task for Hercules. You're not violent. <laughs> I've shaken him until his teeth chatter. Yeah. 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 I'll show you how to wake him mm-hmm. up. Get hold of his feet. <laughs> right up. I've got his arms. Now then, we'll swing him two or three times and let him go high in the air. <laughs> when he comes down, he should either be awake or have a broken neck. Well, we're looking on. Aren't we liable to throw him clear off the haystack? If we're lucky, maybe we will. Come on now. Swing him. Right up. All right. One. Two. Three. <laughs> Let him go. Hey, hey, look out. <laughs> <laughs> Dad gum your ornery hides. Boy, if you two ain't the top notch city cats, I met you. Uh, morning, Doc. Morning, my grandma. Don't you know you're liable to bust a feller's neck by flinging him around that way? Yes, we thought of that. You, you, you went and done it anyway? Apparently. Well, now I'm a slick tail hypnoceros. Trying to murder him make me in my sleep. Nice, cozy couple of partners. <laughs> well, at least we accomplished our purpose. The same being? Waking you up. Well, you could have been accomplished just as easy by speaking nice and gentle to me. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Doc, now that you're awake, sit up and look around you. I ain't going to do it. going to lay right here and rest. Oh, I say, listen. You're going to do nothing of the kind. Yes, I am. And, and Reggie, mm-hmm. while I'm resting, you run over to the nearest farmhouse... And have them start frying ham and eggs. Mm-hmm. And mixing up a batch of about 20 sour milk hotcakes. Is that all? Well, it'll do all right for a starter. <clears throat> and, and when the eggs is turning nice and crisp around the edges, give a yell and I'll come a running. You sure you wouldn't like some orange juice and, uh, we'll say, half a cantaloupe? Yeah, it might be good at that. Uh-huh. How about a side order of crisp fried potatoes? Yeah, and, and, and maybe some hot biscuits. <laughs> Well, what you standing there chortling about, Reggie? Get a going. It's all a big, beautiful dream, Doc. Huh? What you mean? Sit up and take a look around you. Yeah? Well, hey. Well, well, spank me for a baby. I'd rather kick you for an idiot. You got us into this. But, but, but look, you, Jack, this is serious. We're, we're marooned. <laughs> marooned on a haystack. And not a sour milk hot cake in sight. Well, but it, it must be eight or ten miles to the nearest inhabitants. That's what we figured. But I, I can't do that, Jack. I can't go without my food like this. Well, you boys know how my stomach is. <laughs> Doesn't he suffer interestingly, Reggie? Oh, yes, there's a beautiful expression of agony in his eyes. Well, I ain't fooling, fellas. Honest, I ain't. Well, right this minute, I'm so hungry, I got cold chills up and down my spine. Those aren't cold chills. They're hayseed and stickers down your back. Well, there's nothing for it, Doc, but to walk to the habitat of the nearest native. Reggie, did... Did you say walk? Looks like it. Unless you can figure some way of making the car carry us while lying prone on its side. Yeah, yeah, that's it, the automobile. I'm afraid not. But not. looky, we, we ain't seen her this morning. Maybe we, if we all get our shoulder under her... You know better than that, Doc. But I can't walk ten miles. On a full stomach, I can't walk ten miles. On an empty one, I can't even hardly get off my back. Who was the smart driver who took this shortcut? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Who was the smart driver who turned us over in the ditch? Okay, okay. And you spilt the milk, so stop crying over it. Oh, it ain't, and I'm exactly crying, Jack. It's, I it's say, just... Jack. Hmm? Look yonder. What's that? Well, I'll be doggone. Or Jack. It's little old female girl are coming up the road. Look here, where did she come from? She wasn't inside a few minutes ago. Oh. I see something else that looks fairly interesting. Well, there ain't nothing more interesting than a pretty little old she-woman. Blamed if I don't think she's come to rescue Well, now, what do you expect her to do? Pack you out of here on her back? Well, I, I wish you'd hurry up and get close enough 
So as I can see if she's as pretty as I hope she is. I'm still more interested in what I see further in the distance. The distance? Oh, Jack, I say. Dust raising. And the way it's rising, I'd say there was a car coming this way in a hurry. Doggone, a pretty girl in a ride to town all in one break. Yes, but look here. Shouldn't we get down off this haystack and flag the car? Decidedly. Yes, sir. Let's make that our thought for the day. Get down and flag that automobile. Well, get up, Doc. Get moving. Uh, wait a minute. I-, I just had a better thought. Well, hurry up. What is it? You and Reggie flag the automobile, and I'll flag the girl. Oh, oh no. All right, all right. Now you've had your joke. Here, wait a minute. Huh? What's the matter? Get down, Reggie. Out of sight. I say, Jack. Keep down. Now watch. That girl's seen the dust rising back of her. But, but what the I say, heck? look at her. She's running for this haystack. Well, what she you know? <laughs> you suppose she's seen me and recognizes me as her dream man? <laughs> oh, yeah. And you keep down so she doesn't see you. Well, I don't get it, Jack. I don't either. Apparently she's afraid of that approaching car. Or else she just doesn't want to be seen. Boy, will you look at her run. Why, my cousin Winnie Mae down in Texas couldn't do no better than that. I say the car's getting closer rapidly. I just caught a glint of the windshield in the sun. Poor little fella. She's still got a ways to come. She'll make it before the car gets close enough to see her. If she can keep it up. Man, I'd sure hate to have to chase that baby. Come on, sugar, keep laying them down. You'll make I it. I say, just another hundred yards. Car's still a mile and a half down the road. Yeah, but it ain't wasting no time. And that ain't no road to make time on, neither. Hey, hey, looky at her. What, Jack? That little old female girl's a hundred. Jove, look at her face. She's frightened. She'd have to be frightened to run like that. Now she's going to make it all right. Joe, there she goes out of sight. What do you suppose she'll do? Burrow into the hay and lie quiet if she's smart. Well, Jack, uh, maybe I should ought to slide down off this here haystack and kind of comfort you. stay right where you are. But look here, Jack. The car will be here in another minute. Now, if we don't get down and flag it, it'll be gone and we'll still be without transportation. Yes, son. Son, it'll flash right by. Let it flash by. Well, hey, and us have to walk ten miles to breakfast? Is your breakfast more important than this girl's safety? Uh, yeah, yeah, that is a problem. I don't see any problem. Well, I do. What you'd rather do, sacrifice a girl's honor or my stomach? <laughs> well, there she is, going right by. Oh, hmm. apparently they aren't going by after all. No, oh, they've seen our car in the ditch. Can you see how many there are, Rodden? Three. Two men in the front seat and one in the back. Getting out to examine our automobile. Jove, look at the size of those two young chaps getting out of the front seat. <laughs> Real honest to goodness farmer boys. Reggie, how'd you like to tangle with one of them? Right. I hope I don't have to. That man in the back seat, he's much older. Yeah. He seems doggone curious about our automobile. Why shouldn't they be? Car in the ditch way out here? I say, they're looking over here. Yeah. Well, I was afraid of that. Yeah. You mean uh, they'll be coming over here? They're bound to. And if they do, they're almost sure to find the girl. Well, son, we, we can't have that. But is there anything we can do? Yeah. Let's slide down off the stack and go to meet them. And if, uh, if they're still curious about the haystack after that? We're in good health. What's to keep us from stopping them? Son, I was uh, hoping you'd say them words. Come on, Reggie. Let's go see if we can't get ourselves a little fist fighting. <laughs> Further adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.
Metro Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. Martin Morse adventure thriller, The Battle of the Century. Six o'clock in the morning, on top of a haystack in somebody's pasture somewhere in Yellow County, California. Last night, while Reggie and Jack slept in the rear seat of the car, Doc tried for a shortcut ran the car onto a private road some ten miles from civilization and turned it over in a ditch. The trio, making the best of it, found a haystack and turned in for the night. Shortly after dawn, they awakened and lay discussing means of getting breakfast and help when the girl on foot approached up the road. Suddenly, she saw the dust of an automobile behind her and in a panic, she ran to the haystack and burrowed in, unaware of the trio up above. The approaching car was on the point of speeding past when the driver saw the boy's car in the ditch and pulled up. After examining it, their attention was turned to the haystack some hundred yards distant. Jack, realizing if the three in the car came to the haystack that find the girl, decided that he and Doc and Reggie should descend from the stack and go to meet the occupants of the car. All right, Reggie, slide off the haystack. Well, I say, right out in plain view of those three chappies over yonder? Well, why not? Hmm. Huh. Right oh. Take it easy, son. That, that's 20 feet down to the ground. Well, the sides aren't too steep. I can slide all the way down. Yeah, but you're going to slide fast. Well, here goes. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. <laughs> Never mind that. Boy, he shot down that haystack like a toboggan sled. <laughs> Doc. Huh? Those men have seen us. Get down, quick. Yeah, here we go. Whee! Came down fast, all right. Hey, that's okay. A little pile of hay to land on. Well, man could use a parachute. Look out, here comes Jim. Yeah. Well, that was quick. Talk about shooting the shoots. Reminds me of the time me and my female cousin Winnie Mae slid off a roof on the farm. Mm-hmm. Only they, it was splinters that time. <laughs> no. Well, uh, no, well, what do we do now? Well, those three men look to me slightly on the antagonistic side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just standing over yonder staring at us. Uh, did, did we go over? That's what we came down for. Come on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, those, uh, those two younger chaps. Get on the brawny side, one. Yeah. Built like a couple of bull ripotamus. Uh, like what? Ain't you never heard of a ripotamus? <laughs> I assure you, I never have. Yeah, kind of a second cousin on his mother's side to a hypnoceros. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Now, when we get over to him, Doc, don't start getting humorous. Okay. Only you know how I am when I think of something funny. Well, try not to think of anything funny. Them's orders? Definite orders. That's all I want to know. Well, the nearer we approach, the more those two look alike. Probably Siamese twins no, or something. No, no, no. I say not Siamese. No? Well, they do look a little bit more like Scandinavians, don't they? <laughs> yeah. well, they're Nordic, all right. Blonde, fair, thick bull necks. Mm-hmm. Not too intelligent looking, I'd say. Yeah, fine a pair of in identical morons as I've come across yet. Old chap here looks like a pretty fair sort of citizen, though. Huh? Well, that's enough comments. They quite definitely don't like our looks. Well, that goes double. Doc, behave yourself. Hey there, you man. Are you talking to us? Who else? How are you? Good thing you came along. Go say. Ask him if he's got a fried egg about him. Doc, I told you to cut the comedy. Okay, okay. I suppose you men know you're trespassing. Unintentionally, I assure you. So you say. Well, if you can think of any reason why we'd maroon ourselves out here in this wasteland on purpose, I'll put in with you. That haystack yonder is private property. 
Sleeping in it do any damage? It ain't loud. Now look, what would you have done if you'd run your car into a ditch at midnight? I ain't got no car. Looks to me like you have. That's the boss's car. Well, that's beside the point. Besides, what was you doing out here at midnight anyhow? We took the wrong road and got lost. And if you want to do us a favor, you can hitch a tow rope onto our car and pull us right side up and out of that ditch. This ain't much of a place for doing favors. Well, now, that's an ornery thing to say. Doc. Well, if, if you want to know what I think... Nobody I... does. So, uh, so you won't give us a hand, huh? I don't know. I ain't made up my mind yet. Well, when you do, will you let us know? I might. Might not. Well, while you're trying to decide, would would you mind telling me something about your bodyguard? Oh, bodyguard? Yeah, these two hunks of men. Uh, don't they never say nothing? Oh, well, them's Big Swede and Little Swede. <laughs> Look here. <laughs> Big Swede and Little Swede, huh? Well, how do you tell which is Little Sweet? Little Sweet can't talk no English. Big Sweet talks some English. <laughs> and that's the only way you can tell them apart. That's the only way I can tell them apart. <laughs> well, doggone. Y- you say something to them, and the one what looks intelligent's Big Sweet. Well, I wouldn't say exactly intelligent. <laughs> yeah. Well, hello, son. Nope. That must be Little Sweet. <laughs> hello, Big Sweet. Glad to meet you. Hey, what's the matter? Nothing happened there either. All right, that's enough, Doc. <laughs> well, I'm plumb curious. We'll save it. If you uh, don't mind, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Go right ahead. Oh. Well, I'm I'm Jack Packard. Jack Packard, huh? Yes, do you mind? As good name as any, I suppose. Thanks. This is uh, Reggie York. <laughs> now, that's a silly name, ain't it? I say, old boy. Never mind, Reggie. And this red-headed Texan is Doc Long. He is, huh? Well, ain't you going to say glad to meet us? No. Why, you lop-eared cow. Stop it, Doc. Would you mind saying who you are? I'm Jasper. Jasper, huh? Is that all? Ain't it enough? <laughs> Why not? Well, have you made up your mind about pulling us out of the ditch? Don't push me. Oh, hey, sorry. But... Looky here, fella. We ain't had no breakfast yet this morning. Well, I was reading in a book where people eat too much anyway. <laughs> well, ain't you the sympathetic cuss? I don't aim to be. And another thing, uh, tell Big Sweet and Little Sweet to stop standing there glaring at it. They don't no hurt. No, except they give me the willies. Stand there like that, like they was waiting to jump us. Yeah, they would, too. A word for me, your names would be mince me. Hey, now, you ain't bragging, are you? Never mind that, Doc. Well, are we going to stand here and let him intimate that them two gorillas can... We're a lot more interested in getting our car out of the now, ditch. just a minute. Is one of your boys aiming to say he can lick one of the Swedes? No. He... I am, too. I'm a-saying me and Reggie here can wipe the ground up with them two boys of yours. Doc, I told you to... Well, we can, and I'm here to prove Joe, it. Joe, Doc, Well, I... now, that's mighty interesting, huh? I think the boss would like to meet you, boys. Boss? Yes, boss is what you might say, uh, cracked on the subject of prize fighting. Now, see what you've got yourself in for, Doc? How you mean, prize fighting? Well, he just likes it. He likes prize fighting better than most folks like Saturday Night Bingo. Well, we haven't got the now, time. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Uh, let's see what he's got to say. Uh, naturally, we don't get no professional matches up this way, living out here on a... 40,000 acre ranch, we, we don't get much of anything. All very interesting. Jack, will you hush up? Now, what's that got to do with us going to see your boss, Mr. Jasper? Well, on account of he likes prize fighting so much, he kind of built his own ring, if you get what I mean. Yes, I do. And I don't like well, it. Well, I do. Keep it talking, fella. Now, as I was saying, having his own ring, he's always on the lookout for fighting men. Home talent, huh? And his big, sweet, and little sweet, a couple of his fighters? They're his prime favorites. Well, what you know? Doc, I could break your neck with pleasure. What you talking about? Why, <laughs> well, we couldn't any more pass this up than... How about it, Reggie? We ain't scared, are we? No, of course not, but... But I'll... nothing. Son, you hitch your automobile onto ours and pull us out of the ditch, and, and uh, we'll go talk to your boss about uh, smacking these two Nordic babies clean back where they come from. Deal? It's nothing of the kind. Well, I say it is, and Reggie says oh. it is. That's two again but, one. But, Doc, I didn't say Sure anything. you did, fella. You ain't never run out on a good fight. Not never. But it's insane, Doc. 
It's one thing to fight for a purpose, but just to get into a ring for the pleasure of a wealthy farmer because he likes prize well, make fighting. up your minds, Chance. I ain't got all day. I say no. I say yes. Well, what do you say, well, Reggie? Jove, now, You I... don't care one way or the other. Is that it, Reggie? Well, I... I... Oh, I say, I wouldn't mind a bit of a round with one of those chappies. It might be very interesting. On the other hand, Jack's quite... Oh, go, as... Jack. Okay, Jack, we're, 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 we're stymied. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll flip you a nickel. Heads we fight, tails we stick our tails between our legs and get for home. I uh, shouldn't even do that. Oh, come on. Where's your sporting blood? Heads we fight, tails we don't. Here she goes. Uh, now, here, let alone. Let me see that. Yeah. <laughs> Head she is. Should have known better than to let a crazy idiot like you. Okay, Jasper, hook on to us and pull us out of the ditch. That's the way it's going to be, huh? That's the way it's going to be. And uh, are your two hunks of humanity going to be sorry? Now, go on. Hook your automobile on to us. Ain't going to need the car. Big sweet little sweet will lift you out of the ditch. I say you mean those two chaps. But... Sure. Now, go on, you fellas. Put that machine back on the road. Well, doggone, they're going off to do it. I say, Doc, perhaps Jack was right after all. Now, just a minute, you fellas, there's something else. I think that's plenty for now. Well, this is something else. Uh, you fellas been over in that haystack since last night? Yeah, that's right. See anything of a girl? A girl? Out in this no man's land? That's what I'm asking you. Did you see a girl? Certainly not. Was she in an automobile? No, she weren't in no automobile. Horseback, huh? No, not on horseback. Well, uh, what sort of looking gal was she? Oh, kind of yellow-haired, small. Prettiest thing in all the state of California. Yeah? Well, what would any female gal like that be doing traipsing around on foot way out here? She was running away from home, if it's any of your business. You don't say. You're home? No, I ain't married. Oh, I see. But you want to get married. No, I don't want to get married. I'll stomp the man's teeth out who says that I do. Then would you mind saying who this gal is? She's the boss's daughter, if it's any of your business. Which, of course, it ain't. That's what I was thinking. Uh, so you ain't seen her? No, I'm afraid not. But will you tell me why the daughter of a man who owns 40,000 acres of land is running away from home at 6 o'clock in the morning? Because she's 18 got just as much spirit as her old man. Is that what brought you out here looking for? Well, maybe it is, maybe it ain't. Now, ain't that a pretty business, hunting down gals? It's a wonder you, to me you ain't got bloodhounds on a trail. You want to poke in the nose? Now, looky, you're lots older than me. Well, keep your comments to yourself about that girl, and that's just what you're going to get. Well, I still think it's a mighty mangy trick, running around the country trying to catch a gal that don't want to be caught. What kind of an old buzzard is her, old man, anyway? Never mind that either. He's my boss. Yeah, I get it. Well, Jasper, old Joe, kid. Jack, will you look at those two men? Holy jumping cat! Lifting that car back on the road as though it were a sack of flour. And them's the two guys we're supposed to fight. Oh, quite. Yes, sir. A couple of bull elephants. Well, you asked for it. I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at the same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morris, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Forson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York, with Louis Van Ruten as Jasper. Well, sir, you want to know what happened next? You want to know what happened when Reggie sinks his fist in Big Sweet's kisser? You like to know what Jack said to the girl with the yellow hair and, and what she said to him? Well, then you just listen to I Love a Mystery tomorrow night. That's right. Tomorrow night, when you're going to meet Miss Jack Dempsey Ross in person. Thank you kindly. Ted Malley speaking. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.
Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mr. A. Transcribed. adventure thriller, The Battle of the Century. Seven o'clock in the morning on a private road of a 40,000 acre ranch somewhere in Yolo County, California. Last night, Doc took a shortcut, got lost, and landed the boy's car in a ditch ten miles from anywhere. The three spent the rest of the night in the nearby haystack. At six the next morning, from the top of the haystack, they watched a girl approach down the abandoned road. Suddenly, the dust cloud of an approaching car sent her running for the haystack. Quickly, she burrowed into the hay and lay still. The car stopped when the occupants saw the boy's machine in the ditch. Jack, Doc, and Reggie slid down the haystack and went to meet them. Two of the three men were young giants, almost identical, known as Big Swede and Little Swede. The only way of telling them apart was that Big Swede spoke a little English. The third and older man was Jasper. Jack asked him to pull them out of the ditch. Yes, and that was when Jasper made me a counterproposal. He said he'd get us out if we'd return with him to the ranch house and fight the two Swedes. But the big boss was prize fight crazy and had a private ring. Well, I was against it, but Doc was all for it and won his point. So Jasper sent the two Swedes over, and with apparent ease, they lifted the car out of the ditch. Then Jasper asked if we'd seen a girl in the vicinity. Said she was the daughter of the ranch owner and was running away from home. Reggie, I swear to goodness, did you see what them two Swede boys did, John? I say, and those are the two chappies we've just agreed to fight. Well, you made a bargain. Can't go back on it now. You'd hold us to it against our wishes? You sure would. You agreed to come to the ranch and put on a fight for the boss if we get your car out of the ditch. There's no backing out now. Well, who the heck said anything about backing out? Well, I just wanted to warn you. Big and little Swede can throw that car in, back in the ditch as easy as they lifted her out. Now, just a minute, Jasper, whatever your name is. Well, deal's a deal, I always say. Oh, you always say that. Huh? Exactly, in so many words. Well, just get this through your head. Nobody gets very far with us using threats. A bargain's a bargain, I always say. There's quite a heap of things you always say, seems to me. And what I say is my meaning. That's all right. We made a bargain, we'll keep it. But don't get it into your head that you're forcing us into anything. No? No. We don't force worth a cent. Doc, you and Reggie go over and see if the car's all right. Sure. Come on, Reggie. Right on. Shouldn't be too much wrong with it. Maybe we can get them Swede boys to let us feel their muscles. <laughs> Why do you want to do that? Well, I kind of like to find out if they got fighting muscle or just common, ordinary lifting mm-hmm. muscle. That's right. There is a bit of a difference, all right. Oh, howdy, boys. Huh. Not a spark out of either of them. Jasper said you could tell Big Swede because he could talk a little English. Yeah. Uh, which one of you talks American? Oh, you won't talk, huh? Well, perhaps you tell us uh, uh, which one of you is Big Swede. Well, honest to Grandma, Reggie, I ain't never come across anything like it. Two great big hooks are standing there shoulder to shoulder giving us a dead mm, fan. Did run all right. Now, look, you fellas, are you just playing dead or... Don't you, honest to goodness, understand the United States? Well, it's no use, Doc. Not a flicker from either. Reminds me of the time my cousin Winnie Mae got her jaws glued together chewing beeswax. Mm-hmm. Her papa had to knock out one of her front teeth with the butt of his six-shooter so they could feed her. <laughs> Joe, it's a bit primitive, what? Oh, Winnie Mae didn't mind. No? She used that empty tooth to spit, though. <laughs> Blind a squirrel with tobacco juice at 20 paces. Oh, how old was Winnie Mae at the time? Well, let's see. That's the year before she eloped with Ernie Shoulder. Who mm-hmm. well, must have been going on about 10, oh, I reckon. Oh, kid. Hey, Doc, what's the matter? Won't the car start? Oh, I ain't tried it yet. I was just telling Reggie about Winnie Mae. Oh, blast Winnie Mae. <laughs> Jack, you oughtn't to talk that way about my blood relations. It ain't chivalry. Doc. Okay, okay. Yeah, I reckon we ought to try out the automobile at that. You want me to get in? No, I'll do it. 
Yeah? Feels the same to sit in. Oh, did you think it wouldn't? A uh, high up front there. Uh, you two Swedes, get out of the way. No telling what this thing will do when I start her up. <laughs> hey, did you hear what I said? Stand aside. Hey, Reggie, go on up there and push them two big bull elephants over to the side of the road. Right. Now then, you boys stand aside, eh? I say, I said stand aside. That's it, Reggie. Push him. Why, you... Hey, Reggie, he swung on you. Swing on me, will you? That a boy, Reggie. He's sagging. He's sagging. He's going down. Reggie, son, you knocked him out. Oh, Joe, I barely near broke my fist doing it. One sweet down and one to go. Oh, I say we can't hit this other chap. He hasn't even moved. Matter of fact, the expression on his face hasn't changed. Well, come on, fella. Put up your dukes. What's the matter with you? Ain't you going to fight for your pardon? Hey, what's going on? Here, Doc, stop it. What's going on here? Yeah, what's the matter with little Swede? Well, Reggie just up and knocked him out. Knocked him out? I don't believe it. Well, maybe you'd like him to knock out Big Swede, too, just to prove. Stop it, Doc. What was the matter, Reggie? Oh, sorry, I lost my temper for a moment. Doc wanted to start the car, and the two were standing directly in the way. Well, we asked him to move, and then I went over and started to push them to the side of the road, and that chap he swung on me, and I let him have it. That's a lie. You hit him with something. Mr. Jasper, did you say I lied? You hit him with something. Sure he did, with his fist. Did you say I lied? Now, see here, young fellow. Did you say no, I lied? No, 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 on second thought, maybe I was a mite hasty. Uh, uh, you swear you just up and knocked him out? Certainly. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, there was no trick about it. If you're insinuating, no, no, Mr. No, Jack... no, 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 don't get me wrong. In fact, it's the best thing that's happened. <laughs> well, uh, come on, boys. What are we waiting for? Let's get back to the home ranch. Uh, big Swede, pick up Little Swede there and toss him in the back of my car. Uh, just a minute. I don't know whether our machine will go or not. Well, hurry up and find out. If it won't go, I'll tow you in. Uh, just one thing, though, boys. Uh, can you keep this a secret? What do you mean? Uh, you might not say anything at the home ranch about knocking out Little Swede. Well, why should we? Sure, that's the stuff. Spoil the big fight for the boss if he knew beforehand one of his men had been knocked out by one of you. The big fight? Sure. In the ring at the ranch. Y'all promise not to say anything. All right. That's talking. Now I'll go get my car and bring it up alongside. Ooh. What's it all about, Jack? I don't know. He certainly got awful friendly after he saw what Reggie could do. I say, I'm getting rather keen to see what the home ranch and the boss is like. Have you both forgotten that girl over in the haystack? Hey, that's right. Well, now listen. I want a chance to talk to her. It's apparent that Jasper and the two Swedes were chasing her. What I want to do is get rid of them. Yeah, so as we can have a nice, cozy chat with the little lady. Not we. What you mean, not we? You and Reggie are going back to the ranch house with Jasper and the two Swedes. Hey, now, Jack. Will you listen, Doc? We haven't got much time. If you two are with him, he won't be worried about me not following him. That'll give me the chance I want. Okay, well, we'll, we'll go with him. Well, yeah, but I'm the ladies' man in this outfit. Oh, here he comes. Now do as I say. Let me do the talking. What's the matter? Won't you start? Uh, the self starter was stuck. I think I got it fixed now. I'll try it. Yeah, that uh, seems to be all right. Hey, uh, how about Reggie and Doc riding back with you? Sure, sure. It's a good idea. Lots of room. Got on. Come on, Doc. Okay, but I ain't happy about it, I can tell you. If you lose me, take the road to the right about three miles down. Take you right up to the ranch house. Thanks. I may have to take it a little easy. Now you'll see what that girl in the haystack has to say for herself. All right, safe to come out. Hey, wherever you are, come on out. Apparently, she doesn't believe me. Oh, oh. oh, no use trying to hide anymore. You're not at all well covered up. That's a very pretty silk stocking sticking out of the hay. Oh, Doc! <laughs> well, hello. You couldn't either see my leg sticking out of the hay. <laughs> I know. That was one way to find you. Well, that's cheating. You should be ashamed. Oh, I am. You know, sitting up in the hay that way, you look like my picture of Aphrodite emerging from the ocean spray. Well, a few more clothes on, I hope. Yes, but she was no better looking. Say, who are you, anyhow? I'm Jack Packard. Who are you? You don't know who I am? No. I thought everybody in this part of the country knew me. I'm not from this part of the country. I'm Jacqueline Ross. Uh, how do you do, Jacqueline? 
How do you do, Mr. Packer? You know, you're a very nice young person to be running away from home and hiding in a haystack. I thought you didn't know anything about me. Well, I was on top of this haystack and saw you run over here and dive in. But how did you know I was running away from home? Because the car you were running from stopped over on the road, and a man named Jasper seemed very anxious to find you. Oh, well, was it only Jasper? If I'd known that, I wouldn't have run. Well, there were two Scandinavian boys with him. Oh, they wouldn't have made any difference. They don't ever say anything anyhow. I see. Well, now that I've found you, what am I going to do with you? Oh, I like that. Who do you think you are, anyhow? <laughs> it looks like I've suddenly become your guardian angel. Oh, no, you haven't. Oh, yes, I have. Are you being funny? No. Well, I'm not going back to my father, and that's that. Why? Because I'm going to choose the man I marry, no matter what anybody says. Good, good. That'll be our thought for the day. Marry anyone we choose in spite of anybody. You agree to that? I do. How old are you? Eighteen. Hmm. So your father wants you to marry one man, and you want to marry another? Yes. Isn't there anything that would make him see it your way? Yes, but it's silly. What's silly? Well, he's crazy about prize fights. He's so crazy about the prize fights. You know what he named me? His own daughter? You said your name was Jacqueline. Well, that isn't what he named me. He named me Jack Dempsey Ross. <laughs> what? Yes, he did. <laughs> because Jack Dempsey is his favorite champion. That's just how crazy he is about prize fighting. But what's that to do with you marrying whom you want? Well, the only way I can marry Duke is if Duke can get a fighter that can whip Big Sweet and Little Sweet. Would you say that again? I know it sounds crazy, but that's my father. If Duke Duke's find... the man you want to marry? Yes. If Duke can find a fighter who can whip the two Swedes, father will agree to me marrying Duke. He's got a real prize fight ring right on the ranch. Yes, Jasper told me that. But it's silly. There's nobody around here who would even dare get in the ring with them. They're too big and strong. Now, just a minute. Which side of the fence is Jasper on? Oh, uh, he's a love. He's done everything to help me. Well, I thought he worked for your father. He does. He's foreman of the ranch. Boy, your father knew he was helping me run away. Helping you run away? I thought he was chasing you. No. I'm sure he was hoping to find me and take me on into town. Is that where you were going, into town? No. I'm supposed to meet Duke right here. Well, we well, can sit right here and wait for Duke. I'd like to meet that young man. Hey, you mean you'll help us elope? No, I'm afraid not. Oh. So you're a traitor. Here, just a minute. So that's the kind of a man you are. You want a girl's whole life. But if you just listen... I don't to... want to listen. You just wait till Duke gets here. I hope he's got a gun. I hope he's got a great big gun. <laughs> a cannon, maybe? Well, anyway, something to shoot you with. Other transcribed adventures of Jack Duck and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at the same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Pawson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York, with Louis Van Ruten as Jasper, and Mercedes McCambridge as Miss Jack Dempsey Ross. Whether you're a sporting fan or not, you'll want to hear this week's Sports for All show over most of these stations on Thursday night. For Bill Slater's guests this week are two of America's great inspirational sports names. There's prize fighter Barney Ross and ex-New York Giants football star whom Grant led Rice named for all-time All-American football honors Ken Strong. So hear them on Sports for All this Thursday night. Frank McCarthy speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed.
Dalton Moss adventure thriller, The Battle of the Century. Seven o'clock in the morning, on the lee side of a big haystack in an isolated section of Jim Ross's 40,000-acre ranch somewhere in Yolo County, California. Last night, Jack, Doc, and Reggie spent the night in this same haystack when Doc got lost and ran their car into a ditch ten miles from the nearest town. This morning, from the top of the stack, they saw a girl approach on foot and then run and hide in the stack below them on the appearance of a car in the distance. The car drew up abruptly when the driver saw the three comrades' car in the ditch, and the trio slid down from the stack to ask for help. They were met by Jasper and Big and Little Swede. Yes, that's when we learned that we were on the Jim Ross Ranch, of which Jasper was foreman. That the ranch consisted of 40,000 acres, that Jim Ross was a prize fight fan, even to having his own prize ring on the ranch. That the two Scandinavian boys, Big and Little Swede, were the big boss's favorite fighters. And it would be well worth anyone's time if he could whip these two young giants. Against my judgment, Doc accepted the challenge, and Reggie sided in with him. Yeah, and was Jasper tickled. He insisted we should go back to the ranch house with him after Big and Little Swede had lifted their car back onto the road. Jack took our car and sent me and Reggie on ahead with Jasper and the Swedes. As soon as they were out of sight, I went back to the haystack and found the hiding girl. She turned out to be Jacqueline, Jack Dempsey, Ross. Twenty-year-old daughter of the big boss, running away from home to elope with a man she loved. A man named Duke. She said she was to meet Duke here at the haystack and asked me to help them. When I said I thought not, she flew into a rage and dissolved into tears, refusing to listen to anything I tried to say. Oh, why? Why does a girl ever trust a man? You're acting like a little fool. That's it. Call me names. Way out here with nothing for miles but this haystack. But if you'll just calm down. I am calm. All right, all right. If you're calm, then listen to me. I won't. I tell you all about me. I trust you. And then you turn on me. I haven't turned on you. You have. You have, too. Oh. Eh, you women make me sick. There, you see. You hate women. You like seeing me, Mr. Hubble. What you need is a good spank. Sir, don't you dare lay hands on me. I'm not going to lay hands on you, but somebody ought to. Oh, just you wait till Duke hears about this. Just you wait. Well, if Duke's a smart man, he'll never show up. Oh, what do you mean? Well, just that you've got a temper like a catamount and a disc like two cats with their tails tied together. I have not. I say you have. And if your father's trying to palm you off on some man, I'd say he has an awful grudge against you. You're him. absolutely and completely horrid. And you couldn't tell the truth if you wanted to. Couldn't I? No, you can't. I'm young and lovely. And every young man in the country is crazy about me. They're crazy, all right. Hey, there's a car coming up the road. Oh, you suppose it's father? Well, suppose it's your father. Then what? But he mustn't find me. I'm eloping. I don't want anybody but Duke to find me. Well, maybe it's Duke. Mm, but supposing it isn't? Well, then you better get back under the hay until we find out. What good will that do? You'll tell on me. Will I? Well, you said you wouldn't help me. No, I won't help you run away. But neither will I give you away. Do you mean that? Well, look. If you don't want to be seen, you better dive back into that hay. That car's getting close. Oh, yes. I got a nice little nest dug down here. Well, lie still. I'll finish covering it. <laughs> well? I'm sorry I was so rotten. I didn't mean to think like that. It's too late. You've already shown what kind of a girl you are. Oh, I hate you worse than any man I ever knew. Well, you better keep still. That man's getting out of his car and coming over here. Is it your father? How do I know whether it's your father? I never saw him in my life. Has he got a point and red hair? Shut up. Oh, good morning. Is uh, this your haystack? No, it is my haystack. Hey, what are you doing here? I slept here last night. Yeah? Yeah. My name's Jack Packard. What's your name? Does it make any difference? It might. I asked you what you were doing here. And I said I slept here last night. Well, you're not sleeping here now, are you? No. Then would you mind moving on? Well, that's not very friendly. Well, I don't feel very friendly. That's too bad. Hangover? No. I thought maybe it was, and you'd come out here to this haystack to sleep it off. Well, I didn't. Mind telling me why you did come out here? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, I mind telling you. Oh. Your name wouldn't be Duke, would it? 
How did you know that? And you wouldn't be looking for a girl named Jack Dempsey Ross, would you? Her name isn't Jack Dempsey, it's Jacqueline. Well, the way I heard it, her father's a nut about prize fighting and named his only child after his favorite ring champion. And his name certainly wasn't Jacqueline. Say, who are you anyway? I told you that once. Jack Packard. Well, supposing I am Duke Carter, and supposing I am here to meet Jacqueline, what of it? Going to run away with her, aren't you? Is that any of your business? Going to marry the girl? Say, look here, I now. asked you a simple question, and I repeat it. Are you going to marry her? Certainly I'm going to marry her today. Hmm. I wouldn't if I were you. What? I wouldn't even elope with her. Say, are you crazy? No. Then why shouldn't I marry her? If I can get her out from under her old man's thumb. Because she's got a horrible temper. She has not. Oh, yes, she has. She's a wild Indian if I ever saw one. I don't care if she's a Fiji Islander. If I love her and I want to marry her, I'll do it. And it's none of your business. <laughs> you feel that way, do you? Yes, I feel that way. She, uh, she isn't very pretty. That's a lie. Her legs are too long. They are not. I don't see what you can see in her. I'll tell you what I see in her. She's the most beautiful, the most charming, the loveliest girl that was ever born. And if you say she's not, take off your coat and see what happens to you. <laughs> well, Duke, I guess you win. Certainly I... Huh? What do you mean? Come on out from under the hay, Jack Dempsey. Jacqueline! Say, you... You're speaking to me? Yes, Stop calling me Jack Dempsey. But you told me yourself. I don't care what I told you. You stop calling me Jack Dempsey. And another thing. I'm listening. You're everything I ever said about you for saying all those things to Duke. <laughs> what difference did it make? They didn't even phase him. He's in love. Jacqueline, has this man been annoying you? He certainly has. All right, you. Take off your coat. What for? I'm going to give you the worst licking you ever had. Well, listen to the boy. You heard what I said. Well, it's pretty hot for a fight, even this early in the morning. Besides, I haven't had breakfast yet. I said to I heard what you said. I like a good fight myself at the right time and place, but this isn't it. Let's sit down and talk. Oh, come on, Duke. Let him alone. we got to get started. Sit down. Oh. Hey, you push that girl. You sit down, too. Why, why, you... That's better. Now then, listen to me. I like you, too. You... You like us? That's what I said. Well, you sure have a great way of showing it. Now then, listen to me. You two are making the mistake of your lives running away to get married like this. Well, that's our business. Well, I'm making it mine. You run away and Jack Dempsey here will be disinherited by old man Ross. I told you not to Isn't come... Isn't that the truth? Um, yes. To look at you, Duke, I'd say you weren't any too well off. Well, I've got a little ranch. Sure, but it'd be a lot better if you both stood in well with the girl's father, wouldn't it? But I told you... He wants me to marry another man. With one exception. Oh, it's crazy. Well, nevertheless, he's agreed to let you marry Jacqueline here if you can bring an amateur prize fighter into the ring who can whip Big Swede and Little Swede. Yes, but where can I find anyone like that? Well, there isn't a fighter in these parts who isn't afraid of them. You're wrong. What? I've got a partner who can knock the stuffings out of either of those Scandinavian boys. Oh, you're nuts. Don't tell me I'm nuts, son. Why not? Because I don't like it. All right. If you've got a man who can do what you say, where is he? He and my other sidekick have already gone back to the ranch house with the foreman of your father's ranch. Jasper? Yes. But if father gets hold of him first, I mean before Duke... I thought you said Jasper was on your side. He is. Well, Jasper seemed awfully pleased about something. I don't think he's going to let your father get hold of Reggie before he's had a talk with you and Duke. Reggie? That's the boy who can wail the tire out of the Swedes. How do you know he can do it? Because he already knocked out one of them this morning. Are you sure? That's Jasper. He saw it done. Oh, Oh, Duke, do you suppose... Oh, I don't know what to say. Well, look, even if you're doubtful, it's worth taking a chance, isn't it? If by some hook or crook Reggie is defeated, you can still elope sometime in the future. Oh, I, I guess so. And this way you're gambling on staying in the old man's goodwill and still getting the girl. And what do you say, Jack? Oh, yes. Please, let's try well, it. I don't know. After all, I'm marrying you and not your father's money. Oh, don't be silly. I know that. Well, if you do... Of course I do. And after all, father is all alone in the world except for me. I mean, if I can have you both... It'll be so much better. Good. Then that's settled. Now then, let's all get to the ranch house as fast as possible. Hey, wait a minute. Old man Ross ordered me off his place and threatened to shoot me if I ever came back. He won't shoot anybody. Oh, you don't know father. Well, never mind. I'll see he doesn't shoot anybody. That is, until you've had a chance to tell him about your fighter. After oh, that... Oh, if he once knows Duke's got a fighter to put up against his men, he'll forget all about his grudge. Good. Then let's go tell him. Well, if I get shot... If you get shot, I'll personally tie up your wounds. And if you die, I'll chant hymns on your grave every night for a year. That isn't a bit funny. You think not? You can hear me chant a hymn once. Jekyll, and this fellow sounds to me like he's talking through his hat. You think he's really got a fighter? Oh, I don't know. I've never seen him before. Now, look, am I going to have to hog tie you two kids to get you to the ranch house? Well... You are telling the truth. 
Oh, do we have to go over all that again? I suppose you know I'm trusting the honor of a good woman in your hands. Well, let's make that our beautiful thought for the day. You're trusting the honor of a good woman in my hands. If you're making light of oh, what Oh, come I... on, come on. Stop acting like the hero and the drunkard and let's get started. And just so you won't get any ideas about eloping, after all, you ride in my car, Jack Dempsey. You don't stop calling me Jack Dempsey. I know, I know, I know. You're going to be mad at me again. Oh, why wasn't I born a man with lots of muscle? But just you wait. My father will take care of you. Further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York, with Mercedes McCambridge as Miss Jack Dempsey Ross. Frank McCarthy speaking. You know, maybe he works at a desk next to yours or on a machine down the line. Now, he makes the same money you do, yet he can afford to send his son through college. How does he do it? Well, it's simple. You see, he played it smart. He started buying United States savings bonds through the payroll savings plan when it first started. And today, well, today he's got more than enough to see his boy through college. Now, if he can do it, so can you. Plan to put twice as much in savings bonds as you're doing now. And save that money before you spend it. With the automatic purchase of savings bonds, you'll pile up savings that will buy you a home of your own or a college education for your children and old age without financial worries. Join the part payment payroll savings plan where you work. Or if you're self-employed, use the bond a month plan where you bank. If you can't participate in a regular plan, buy an extra bond now at any bank or post office. Don't delay. Your own future, your country's future, can't wait. Buy United States Savings Bonds. This program came from New York. There are sports thrills for all on Sports for All over most of these stations tonight. Hear Bill Slater with his sport guest, Fight Master Bonnie Ross, and the all-time All-American football star, Ken Strong, on Sports for All Tonight. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller, The Battle of the Century. Looky, Jack. Ain't I about the prettiest thing you ever did see? Purple trunks and everything. Doc, they are positively ghastly. What you mean, ghastly? They asked me what colored trunks I wanted to fight him, and I said the purplest purple they had. 
<laughs> These are snakes. Oh, yes, no. there's no doubt about them being purple, all right. <laughs> yeah, they kind of match my red hair, don't you think? No, I don't. Well, that's because you ain't got no sense about colors, Jack. Well, maybe you're uh, kind of colorblind or something. I wish I was every time I look at you. Well, you're simply going to overpower your cowboy opponent by sheer weight of color, Doc. I'm going to overpower him with more in color. Boy, I'm going to wipe up the floor with that curly hombre. The old fire eater himself. You're huh? dang tootin'. Hey, Jack, you better hurry up and get yourself in your trunks. Fights are starting pretty soon. I'm not going to put on any trunks. Well, you ain't? I am not. I think the whole business is silly. I'm not going to make it any sillier by dolling myself up like a chorus girl. What you mean, chorus girl? These here are honest-to-goodness fighting trunks. And I'm still not going to put them on. Well, you'll have to strip down to the waist. They'll insist on that. Then I'll strip down to the waist. Well, well anyway, fella, I'll put on these regulation shoes. Well, you don't want to have your feet go slipping out from under you just when you're ready to give him the coupie de Gracie. What? <laughs> oh, no. Coupie de Gracie. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> Fighting in the ring ain't like fighting with your feet on solid ground. Come on here. Put on these shoes. All right, Doc. All right. Well, well, come on. Come on out there. What are we waiting for? Well, Doc, I say there's still 20 minutes until we're due at the ring. What I want to know is, how did we get ourselves into this? Well, that's simple. That curly cowboy got nasty with me and I up and socked him to sleep. Now I got to give him a chance to get even. Only he ain't going to get even on account I'm going to send him bye-bye again. Well, that doesn't answer my question. Well, you ought to know how you got into this. That there Ole hombre barges around the corner of the barn and smacks into you, and then he ups and takes a swing at you. Yeah, but why did he take a swing at you? Mm-hmm. Because he has that kind of a disposition, I suppose. Well, I think you're wrong. Hmm? Hey, what you talking about? I think both of these fights are frame-ups. Oh, look here, Jack. How can they be frame-ups? Well, Curly picked a fight with me, and, and Ole picked a fight with you. Well, that's just it. Two strangers pick quarrels with us out of the empty air. Why? It doesn't make sense. Well, well, all I know is when a guy swings on me, he better duck on account of I'm going to swing right back. Certainly. That's just what Jim Ross anticipated. I say, are you saying Mr. Ross deliberately set those men on you? Sure he did. It's as plain as the nose on your face. Well, what did he want to do that for? For tonight's show. I said, do you, do, you, do you think his love of prize fighting would make him go that far? I mean, he said, deliberately start a quarrel so that the men would fight it out in his own private prize ring? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Hmm? You heard him say he had 150 men working for him. Yeah, that's right. And he also said that they put on two or three grudge fights in the ring every Wednesday night. Yeah, sure he did. Well, doesn't it sound a little unreasonable to you that 150 men can't work together without having two or three bitter quarrels every week? Joe, that does seem a large percentage. Unless all his men are as ornery as old and curly. Well, if they are, they've been made that way by Jim Ross. What you driving at, son? I think that man spends all his spare time causing trouble among his men just for the pleasure of seeing them fight. Why, the old son of a gun. Yeah, and we've fallen very neatly into his trap. Yeah, son, I... I reckon there ain't nothing we can do about it at this stage of the game. No, but we can see that we don't fall into the trap again. Well, I don't see how. Every time anybody takes a swat at me around this here ranch, I'm going to bop them right back. Yes, and that's another fight for the ring. Nothing of the kind. We'll insist on settling the argument right then and there. Yeah, sure. That's the way to handle it. Hey, where's Duke Carter? I ain't seen him all evening. Oh, look here. He's about somewhere with Jacqueline Ross, naturally. Yeah, I suppose so. Lucky stiff. Only good-looking girl in miles. She's got to be in love with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Well, your women always seem to be in love with someone else, Doc. Yeah, I can't figure it out. No. Me being as popular as I am with women. Just the same, Jack. That was a smart understanding you had with Mr. Ross, insisting that his daughter and you could see as much of each other as they liked until the fight. I didn't do it for them. I just thought it would make the old man uncomfortable. Ah, You don't like him? Oh, he's all right, I guess. Only this prize fight mania proves that he's got a cruel streak in him. And I don't like that. Yeah. I never thought about that. You know, I say, there's one thing I don't care about. Well, what's that, Ray? This business of two weeks of training. He's already talking about coming over here and watching me train. What does he expect me to do? Put on a show for him? Well, professionals always go through a lot of monkey business. The gym stuff, sparring partners, road work, stuff like yeah, that. But I say I don't need it and I won't have it. And you don't have to do it either. Look here, if, if Ross expects it of me, well... Oh, tell him to jump in the lake. Sure. Oh, by the way, Doc, I've got an idea. Let's see what you think of it. Well, shoot, son. How'd you like to go into the ring double tonight? Double? Yeah. 
We go in together. The old back-to-back stuff. Hey, I think you got something, fella. Yeah, it works in the open. I don't see why it wouldn't work in a prize ring. Oh, boy. Could we make Ole and Curly look silly? It's spectacular and probably give the crowd some excitement. Yeah, but look here, do you suppose Ole and Curly would go for it? Well, they will if Jim Ross tells them to. Then all we got to do is sell the big boss on the idea. Yeah, I can do that. He'll go for anything that's new and exciting. Let's see, sh- shall I go round up Jasper and have him take care of it? Yeah, if you will, Reggie. Hey, you suppose that's our call? Well, I'll go have a look. Well, uh, tell him I'm a ripping and a raring to go. Oh, say, Miss Ross. Miss Jacqueline? Are the boys decent? Can we come in? Yes, certainly. Come right in. We thought you two would be down at the ring. No, there's lots of time for that. Hello, Mr. Packer. Well, well, what's this? Oh! Doc, what in the world are you wearing? Hello, sugar. Uh, how you like my purple trunk? <laughs> You're terrible. Uh, you must be colorblind, too. <laughs> oh, uh, howdy, Mr. Ross. Well, you boys ready for the fight? Sure we're ready. And we'll give you some fighting that is fighting. But we don't like it. You don't like it? No, we don't like and it. And I don't blame you, either. I think my father is a mean, underhanded old man. Jack Dempsey? I do. And Duke agrees with me. Framing Mr. Packard and Doc. The young woman, who's running this shebang? I don't care who's running it. You got Mr. Packard and Doc into this on purpose, and it's a mean trick. And Duke agrees with me. Will you stop bringing that young whippersnapper into the conversation? Duke is not a young whippersnapper. Well, he is a young whippersnapper. He always was a whippersnapper, and he always will be a whippersnapper. Dad, you're just saying that to infuriate And you'll keep bringing his name into the conversation to infuriate me. Duke is the sweetest man in the whole world. Yes, he's probably the poorest man in the whole world. He's not. Well, he won't be forever. He's got ambitions. That's right. He's got ambitions to inherit my money. Yes, not. I say he has. I say yes. Hey, hey, hey. You two, wait a minute here. <laughs> Doggone. Did you ever hear two people go on like that? Well, what's a man to do with a daughter like Jack Dempsey? I ask you. Yes, sir, I ask you, what can a girl do with a father like Jim Ross? <laughs> well, we're not interested in your family quarrel. Well, you should be. <laughs> Honest to goodness, honey, do you and your papa go hammer and tongs like this all the time? No, Dad can be as sweet as pie when he wants to. Trouble is, he never wants to. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If my cousin Winnie May ever talked up to her papa like that, well... He'd have busted a rail fence over and flung her off a cliff long ago. You never said a true word. She's spoiled, spoiled rotten. I don't care. I don't care about anything except marrying Duke Carter. Well, you'll never marry him. I will, too. Just as soon as Reggie wipes up the ground with Big Sweet, I'm going to marry Duke at the biggest wedding this county's ever seen, and you're going to pay for it. <laughs> when Reggie wipes up the floor with the Big Sweet... Yes, and he can do it, too. I say he can't do no such thing. I say he can't. Well, I say he can't. Hey, hey, but, will you two uh, wait a minute? Reggie can lick Big Sweet any day in the week. Jacqueline, will you shut up? Well, I don't care. You can, too. Well, I agree with you, but I've got something more important to say right now. What's more important than my Marion Duke? Listen, Jack Dempsey. And don't call me Jack Dempsey! Well, I am calling you Jack Dempsey. If you don't keep still, I'm going to turn you over my knee and whale the living daylights out of you right here in front of your father. <laughs> That's the way to talk to a packet. That's it. One girl against four men. Honest to goodness, honey, you do talk awful loud and long for such a, such a little piece of girl. Will you all shut up and listen? All right, all right. Now, look here, Ross. The fight starts in about ten minutes. That's right. All the boys are gathered down the ring and Jasper's refereeing. Well, I don't care about that. I'm interested in what Jacqueline said about you framing us into these fights. Oh, she don't know what she's talking about. I do, too. Be still. Yes, sir. I think she does know what she's talking about. I suspected it before she gave it away. Well, what about it? Just this. We go through with the fights tonight. But don't try it again. If one of my men picks a fight, you got to fight him or show the white feather. But we don't have to fight him in the ring. And we won't fight him in the ring. No? No. We'll knock him out where he stands, and that'll be the end of it. Now then, tonight you want a really good show? What do you mean? Put Doc and me in together with Curly and Ole. Four men? Why not? Then you'll see a really good fight. You boys want to do it that way? Certainly. <laughs> then, boys, that's how it'll be. Whoopee! Jacqueline, tonight you're going to see some fighting that is fighting. Blood, guts, and feathers everywhere. <laughs> Other transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, 
Jim Bowles is Doc Long, and Tony Randall is Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller, The Battle of the Century. You know something, son? The nearer it gets time to go in that ring and mop up, the better I like it. <laughs> First thing you know, you'll be enjoying yourself. Well, I think he's doing that right now. <laughs> of course I am. There's only one thing, old Jack. Those fighting double this way, it ain't so good. I thought you wanted to fight double. I asked you. Oh, yeah, I know. The, the fighting's all right. It's just that I'm going to have to divide the glory with you afterwards. <laughs> oh, no. Well, that's all right with me. You're welcome to all the glory you can get out of this. Well, that's pretty darn swell of you. Only you know I won't take more than my share. Oh, no. Well, I won't. Well, Dad, blame it. Did I ever take more than my share of anything? Well, how about the girls? Oh, gals is different. Oh, yeah? Well, sure they are. I got first call on all the women. Oh, by the way, uh, where's that little old Jack Dempsey gal and her pappy go? Down to the ringside. Old man Ross went down to give Jasper instructions for the four-man fight. Did Ross say Jasper was refereeing? Well, what we need a referee for in a four-man fight of bare fist? Anything goes. I doubt that, Doc. They'll probably keep it a stand-up, clean-blow fight. Well, shucks, I didn't mean to get a man down and gouge him. <laughs> well, just the same with four in the ring... Jasper better keep moving or he's liable to get run down. That's yes, quite. I'd certainly hate to referee a four-man fight in that small a space. <laughs> sure be a good chance to get the referee down and kick him around some, though, if he wasn't giving you the breaks. Oh, but look here, Doc. Remember, Jasper's on our side. He'll want to see you two chappies win. Yeah, we can't kick Jasper around tonight. Well, let's make that our thought for the day. We can't kick Jasper around tonight. <laughs> hey, uh, what's holding things up? I'm a raring and stomping to get started. Ross said they'd send word up here to the training quarters when they're ready for us. It must be about time, though, don't you think? Hmm? Should be. Speaking of training quarters, these are a bit all right, what? Yeah, we should ought to have some fun here the next couple of weeks. I ain't never seen a gymnasium like this here. Punching bags, weightlifting machines, bars, trapezes. Say, did I ever tell you about the time Winnie May's mama took uh, my cousin Winnie May and me to the circus? I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, I did? I don't remember telling you. Oh, go on, Doc. What happened? Well, uh, Winnie Mae didn't ever see a circus before. She was uh, sitting there eating, eating hunks of Cracker Jack when them, uh, them acrobat hombres and females in tights begun swinging out on their trapezes. Well, all of a sudden, one of them female acrobats let go way up in top of the tent and started doing flip flaps. Flip flops. What'd you say? Flip flops. Well, anyway, she started doing didos, and Winnie Mae sucked in her breath and swallowed a hunk of Cracker Jack backwards. <laughs> backwards? Well, I swear to my grandma, that girl darn near choked to death right there. And then uh, some fella picked her up by her feet, and her mama whanged her on the back for maybe ten minutes before they jarred it loose. Mm, well, how, how old were you and Winnie Mae then? Oh, six or seven, I reckon. Mm -hmm. well, weren't you pretty young to remember all the details? Well, shucks, no, Reggie. I even remember reading soft as silk cake flour across the back of her underwear while this hombre was holding her up by her oh, feet. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you. There they are. Come in. Well, if it ain't our little old gal friend. And, Duke, come on in, Duke. You boys ready? We've been ready for hours. You come to get us, Duke? Yes. No rush, though. Jasper said to bring you out in two or three minutes. Everything set for Doc and me to go into the ring together? All set. Jasper says you're crazy to want to do it. He does, huh? Why? He says Curly and Ole are old sidekicks, and they know plenty of dirty tricks. Well, he's not going to let him get away with it, is he? Well, that's just a trouble. What can he do about it? Well, he's refereeing, isn't he? Well, sure, but with four men in the ring, he's not going to be able to see everything. Well, shucks, what do we care, Jack? We can be just as dirty as they can. In other words, anything goes, huh? Well, that's what it amounts to. Does the crowd love it? The crowd's pulling for Curly and Ole, I reckon. Well, sure, that's natural. Duke and I will be sitting in your corner with Reggie. Now you're talking. 
With a pretty little old gal like you a pulling first, we can't lose. Isn't Doc cute, Duke? I'm crazy about him. You are, sure not. Bend over here and I'll kiss you for luck. Yeah, wait a minute. Now, don't be a darn hog, Duke. Be a good guy and turn you back. I will not. Now, don't pay any attention to Duke. He's just jealous. Mm. There. Good? Good. Lady, I feel like I've been kicked by a mule. Wee! Am I dizzy? <laughs> Jack, son, you should ought to get you some of that. It, it's potent. Nothing doing. Jacqueline's my girl, and she's not passing out any more kisses. You're right, son. If I had a girl with that much dynamite in her lips, I'd put up a fight, too. Gee! Am I really that good? I ain't kidding, sugar. Your name should be Jack Dempsey, because you sure carry a wallop. Well, just because she did it once, don't think she's ever going to do it again. All right, son, all right. Now, don't get all head up. I ain't going to steal you, girl. I say, shouldn't we be getting out to the ring? Oh, sure, it's time. Come on. Okay. Well, Jack, fella, here we go, boy. <laughs> You're still dizzy from that kiss. <laughs> sure, I'm still dizzy. I'm walking around on air. Well, that's great. Well, what you mean, that's great? I want a fighter at my back tonight, not a Romeo full of love and kisses. Sonny, it's just like I'm always telling you. There ain't no time I fight better than... When some gal's honors, it's still... All right, all right. I say, you two coming. Yeah, go ahead with Duke and the girl. I want to talk to Doc. right -o. Now, look, Doc. Yeah? No rough stuff unless they start it first. Well, sure, but uh, that don't go if they do start something dirty. No, we'll use whatever tactics they use. We'll work back to back unless they're too cagey for us. If they won't fight that way, then we'll have to split up and go it on our own. But the minute they start pressing us, back to back again. Sure. Same old tactics as we always use. That's it. Hey... Looky yonder. The outdoor ring all lighted up. Oh, good sized bunch of people, too. <laughs> it's funny how your blood starts singing at a time like this. Yeah. Oh, just one thing more now. If one of us knocks out his man first, he's to go to a neutral corner and let the other fight it out alone. Hey, they won't do that. If they get one of us, why? Well, then they'll both jump on the other, and you know it. Well, just the same we don't fight that way. Well, okay, fella. But that gives them an advantage. All right, come on. Hurry it up. They're waiting for you. All right, we're here, aren't we? Curly and Ole are already in their corners. Come on, Jasper's waving to you. All right, boys, come on. Climb into the ring. All right, Doc. Right here through the ropes. Here I come. <laughs> You next, Jack. Hello, boy, Doc. Hello, boy, Jack. Show him how to fight. Oh, hey. You boys all ready? Better go any time, Jasper. Well, let me warn you. I'll do the best I can, but I can't watch everything. And Curly and Ole are bound to get in some fouls. Oh, shucks. Don't worry about that. We'll give them as good as they send. Well, that's fair enough. All right, then. I'm going to introduce you. Yeah. Let her go. All right. Ladies and gents, tonight we caught something new in prize fighting for you. Tonight we're going to give you four men in the ring at once. Two grudges are to be settled in one fight. In this corner we have Curly Wilson and Ollie Jenkins. Listen to little old Jackman. <laughs> yeah, look at old Jim Ross sitting over there on the edge of his chair. Yeah. Don't go. He sure does love a prize fight, do Now, before I call the boy shot the center of the ring, I want to make one more announcement. There will be no rounds in this fight. Once the start, they keep fighting until one side is the winner. <laughs> Let's head together out here. Gather out this way. Right. Now then, this is going to be a hard fight to referee. I want you all to keep it clean. That's all. Now go back to your corners. When the bell rings, come on, fight. You bet you. Come on, Doc. <laughs> Doggone fella. This is all right. Look out. Here comes the bell. Let me at him. Back to back, Doc. Back to back. <laughs> Fighters. Early and only are no slouches. All right, you sick. <laughs> 
transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery. adventure thriller, The Battle of the Century. Come on, let's go in. But Jacqueline, we can't do that. That's their bunk room. I know it. Come on. But there's men asleep in there. Of course there are. That's what I want to find out. How anybody can be asleep at 7 o'clock in the morning. Everyone isn't up raring around the country at the break of day the way you are. Well, stay out here if you want to. I'm going in. But it isn't decent. An 18-year-old girl... And besides, you're engaged to me. So what? Well, so you can't go in there. Oh, I can't, can't I? Well, listen to me, Duke Carter. My father's tried to tell me I couldn't do things all my life, and look what it's got him. Yeah. Say, maybe your old man's got a lot of sympathy coming to him after all. When I want to do something, I... Say, what did you say? I just said you can't walk into a man's bedroom. That isn't what it sounded like to me. No? No. And I'd like to know why I can't. These training quarters belong to my father, don't they? Sure, but Jacqueline, a man's bedroom is sacred. How'd you like to have some man walk into your bedroom while you're sleeping? What I don't know wouldn't hurt me. Well, that's a nice thing to say. All right, you stand here and argue while I go in alone. It's unfair, indecent, and nothing a nice girl would do. Well, you just stand there and feel bad while I'm gone. No, sir. If you go in, I'll go in. Suit yourself. If they wake up, they'll pull us out in their ears and kick us down the steps, and I won't blame them. Don't talk so loud and they won't wake up. Oh, look. This must be Mr. Packard. Sleeping with his head under his pillow. I don't know how you can tell. But those are his clothes over the hood of the bunk. Hey, do all men sleep with their heads under their pillow? No. Packard must be pot ostrich. <laughs> what keeps him from smothering? Maybe he is smothering for all I know. I 
You think we should lift up the pillow and see? No. Oh, all right. I don't think I'd like to marry a man who sleeps with his head under his pillow. You don't sleep with your head under your pillow, do you? Well, certainly not. Hmm. Well, let's see what else we can find. Oh, this is dark. Goodness, doesn't he have red hair? Mm -hmm. If he should open his eyes right now. <laughs> Look at the expression on his face. <laughs> he looks like a satyr. Probably dreaming about women. Yeah, oh, he's sure crazy about girls, all right. You know, he kind of appeals to me. Oh, he does. Mm-hmm. You know, he fascinates me. Well, you keep away from him. He's known women all over the world. Uh-huh. That's what I mean. When he looks at me, I can see him thinking about every woman he's ever known. You like that? Well, I don't know. But I would like to ask him how I stack up alongside all those other girls he's known. The quicker that guy gets out of here, the better I'm going to like Oh, look. Duke, look at his left eye. It's all black and blue. Well, what'd you expect? He had a fight last night. Oh, but I didn't know he got a black eye. Well, anyhow, I'm glad he and Mr. Packard won. Oh, so am I. We've got your father worried. Uh-huh. And is he in a temper this morning? He's crazy to see what Reggie can do now. Yes. Jasper said he told him, if Jack and Doc can fight the way they did last night, and Reggie's even better, well, that Englishman may give big, sweet trouble. <laughs> I'll think he's going to give him trouble. <laughs> Let's go over and have a look at Reggie. Oh, hello, champion. Hey, don't talk to him. You might wake him up. Dookie looks like a baby. <laughs> Pretty good-sized baby. No. Sleeping on his back with his arms up over his head. His face so relaxed and innocent. No. He's not much older than we are. Twenty-three or four, I think Doc said. Do you really think he's got a chance against Big Swede? Well, Jack and Doc think so. I sure hope they know what they're talking about. Hey, look out. He's starting in his sleep. <laughs> Wouldn't he be surprised to open his eyes and see us looking down at him? Come on, let's get out of here. Now, look, won't last forever. Okay. I know. Let's go out and get Belshazzar to wake him up. What you want to wake them up for? Because they've slept long enough. Besides, I want to talk to them. <laughs> go on out and I'll close the door. No! Leave the door open. What for? Never mind. Just leave the door open. Hey, Belshazzar! Yes, Miss Jackie, I'm coming right up. Look, Jacqueline, why not let them sleep? No, they've slept long enough. Good morning, Miss Jackie. You want me, lady ma'am? Look, Belshazzar, didn't my father send you down here to cook for Mr. Packard, Mr. Long, and Dr. Igor? Yeah, he sure did, Miss Jackie. You sure done just that. Well, then why aren't you doing it? Well, uh, for goodness, Miss Jackie, how are I going to cook for them when they're sleeping the way they are? Well, you've got a dinner gong, haven't you? Wake him up! No, oh, I swear to goodness, I done wrung that gong until my arms wore right down to a nubbin. And it didn't faze him? No, ma'am. Didn't even make him turn over. They were the sleepiest young gentlemen I ever did come across. Well, try it again. Yes, ma'am. Ain't no use, though. Well, give it to him good and loud this time. I sure will, ma'am. Come and get it! What's happening inside, Duke? <laughs> Nothing. That didn't wake him up? Not a move out of any of them. Belshazzar! Yes, ma'am. You take that dinner going into that bunk room and ring it until you get some action. Huh? Right into the bunk room? Yes, walk up and down beside their beds and make it loud. Oh, yes, ma'am. And don't come out till they're awake. No, ma'am, I won't. Push the door open wider so we can watch what happens. Well, I'm not responsible for this, and I'm going to tell them. Oh, Belshazzar! Dear friend, do you have to do that? Uh, yes, sir. I sure do. Hey, hey, hey Reggie, I, I think we've been invaded. Yes, quite. Oh, by a big husky Negro person. Hey, hey, you. Uh, you, you talking to me, sir? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Well, what's your name? Belshazzar, sir. Oh, no, not Belshazzar. 
Yes, sir, sure is. Oh, well, well, what's the idea of coming in here pounding on that thing? The orders, sir. Orders? Whose orders? Well, Miss Jackie, sir, she done told me to come in here and ring this here dinner gong until you was all awake. Oh, dear. <laughs> hey, Jack, did you hear that? Hey, Jack, ain't you awake? <laughs> Certainly not. Hey, hey, uh, Bell Hey, uh, Yes, sir. Uh, go on over there by Jack's bed and do that again. Well, this gentleman? Yeah, only he ain't no gentleman. <laughs> Give it to him good. Come in! Come on! Oh, I say, isn't that awful? <laughs> hey, uh, what, what, what happened? Well, nothing happened, boss. You... You don't suppose this gentleman's dead, do you? <laughs> no, no, he ain't dead. <laughs> well, he done got a pillow over his head. Well, just... take the pillow off and uh, and do it again. Yes, sir. Come on, Jerry! Reggie, turn off that alarm clock. <laughs> well, well, uh, this ain't no alarm clock. Huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, what, what, what is it then? Well, this here, sir, is a dinner gong. What? A dinner gong. It don't even work like no alarm clock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, no, sir, it works like this here. Hey, 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 stop that. Hey, you, you awake, sir? Say, who are you, anyway? <laughs> I, I'm Belshazzar, sir. You sure you're not Beelzebub? Oh, no, sir, I'm Belshazzar. Well, what are you doing here? What do you want? I'm your cook, sir. Hey, how you want your eggs? Are sunny side up or with the eyes closed? <laughs> hey, you fellas awake? He wants to know, are we awake? <laughs> yeah. Of course we're awake. Uh, look, uh, Beelzebub. Yeah, Belshazzar, sir. No, all right, Belshazzar. You may be our cook, but you keep that infernal machine out of our bedroom after this. Do you understand? Well, that was all the side. Yeah, man. that little old she-daughter of old man Ross sent him in here. What? Jack Dempsey? You stop calling me Jack Dempsey! Uh, so you're at the bottom of this, huh? Yes, I am! It's silly for grown men to sleep after 7 o'clock. Hey, you mean that's all the time it is? 7 o'clock? Certainly. Now get up and take your showers and then come and have breakfast. Say, Jack, what we got ourselves into anyway? Hey, what do you think you are out there? I'm Jacqueline Ross. My father owns this place. Uh, you're everything I ever said you were. I don't remember what you said. You're homely and your legs are too long and you got a bad temper. And Duke's crazy if he marries you. Why, you great big... Stand up and... And, and what? Well, Duke Carter is standing right out here beside me. And the minute you get out of that bed, I'm going to have him take you apart. Hey, Duke, are you out there? Yes, but I didn't have anything to do with this. I was again it all the time. There you are. That's the kind of a man I'm going to marry. You mean you stood by and let that girl do this to us? But what's a fella going to do? I told her not to, but she went right ahead and did it anyway. The fine married life you're going to have. You stop saying that. First thing he knows, he won't want to marry me. Well, I wouldn't marry you if you're the only woman in the world. Neither would I. I swear to my grandma, you're worse than Winnie May ever was. I say, Duke, are you sure you don't want me to lose my fight with Big Swede? I don't care what you guys say. I'm going to marry Jacqueline no matter what you think. Boy, now there's a man that's a real hero. I swear to my grandma, somebody ought to pin a medal on him. transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morris, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. <laughs>